You know, when I think about mortality, I guess I tend to focus more on other people's death than mine. So in the political scale, and I think, you know, what a leader kind of sends the sends their citizens to die, you know, for their own, you know, for, you know, on, on poor grounds when it's not an honorable war. Um, you know, I think about the, I think about their mortality and I think about the political significance of that. Um, you know, when I think about, uh, you know, the, the killings at the hands of the police and the perversity of that, um, you know, and, and, and what it means to have a sort of large scale kind of disregard for life in those contexts. Then I think about the people close to me and I think about their death a lot more. I think about mine. You're you know? avoiding. Um, well, uh, those <laughs> things are very important. I think perhaps it's easier. And perhaps they're doing the same for me. Maybe they'll think about me and I'll think about them and it'll all come out even. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, you know, I read this poem a lot. I read this Rilke poem. Can I read this Rilke poem? Okay, so this is, this is an amazing poem. It's called Death. And, um, and the thing is that I want to read you, I want to read you some of it in German, but then we'll read it in English. Because you can hear it. It's one of these poems where you can really hear it in both languages. And you can't really translate poetry, but this is a great translation. Um, okay, so Der Tod. That's German. Da steht der Tod. Ein bläulicher Absud in einer Tasse ohne Untersatz. Now I'm going to read you the English. There stands death, a bluish concoction in a cup without a saucer. An odd place for a cup, standing on the back of a hand. One can still easily recognize on the glazed side the crack in the cup, dusty, and hope in faded letters on its bulge. That had the drinker whom this drink concerns read at a distant breakfast. So what beings, then, are those that one must at last scare away with poison? Would they otherwise stay? Are they then here besotted with this meal full of obstacle? One must take out this hard presence like an artificial denture. Then they would mumble, mumble, mumble. O oh, falling star seen once from a bridge, do not forget yourself. Stand. Now I want to read it in German. Okay, because I think you can feel it. It's going to sink in even more. Okay. Da steht der Tod, ein bläulicher Absud in einer Tasse ohne Untersatz. So Absud, this is why it's a brilliant translation, because how do you translate that word? Concoction, as opposed to essence or, you know, um, or uh, uh, what's that word? Um, doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the brilliant of this translation. Da steht der Tod, ein bläulicher Absud in einer Tasse ohne Untersatz. Ein wunderlicher Platz für eine Tasse steht auf dem Rücken einer Hand. Ganz gut erkennt man noch an dem glasierten Schwung den Bruch des Henkels. Staubig. Und Hoffnung an ihrem Bug in aufgebrauchter Schrift. Das hat der Trinker, den der Trank trifft, bei einem fernen Frühstück abgelesen. Was sind das für Wesen, die man zuletzt wegschrecken muss mit Gift? Blieben sie sonst? Sind sie denn hier, wer nach denn dieses Essen wolle Hindernis? Man muss ihnen die harte Gegenwort ausnehmen, wie ein künstliches Gebiss. Dann lallen sie. Gelal, gelal, o oh Sternenfall, von einer Brücke einmal eingesehen, dich nicht vergessen stehen. When I think about my death, I just read this poem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um